Okay, so there's our speaker, at least the roughed-in speaker. Let's take a look over here. We've got our fan, and we've got these computer monitors as well. Uh, I think the computer monitors are 99% texture in this case. Let's bring in another cube. Uh, D, V, and let's bring it to the top of the desk itself. Scale this on down a bit and just move it somewhere over here. Somewhere on top of there is good. Uh, take another look at it. Old screens were uh, four by three, correct? So we kind of want to probably respect that, at least in terms of, but let, let, let's just make this a tiny bit taller, I guess. Anyway, it's going to need to be taller anyway, because I do have that sort of keyboard going on the bottom. Take another look. Yeah, I've got a, a series of com uh, command panels at the bottom. So let's go ahead and hold down shift, right click, edge loop tool, bring in an edge loop. Whoa, not what I wanted. Go back to the tool, right click, make the options mode open, go to relative distance, bring this somewhere around there. That looks pretty good. Right click, grab the face. Once I had the face, let's do an extrusion into that face, something like, uh, let's take another look. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do another uh, extrusion in by hitting the G key, bring it on in. I'm actually gonna scale this in a little bit as well. And we'll go with something along those lines. That's, that's, that's probably good. Taking a look at the reference material, we've got a larger monitor over here and another monitor over there, as well as some sort of a, uh, probably a recording device below that, obscured by our aluminum foil which we probably brought home from uh, you know, leftovers, and then a cup. So let's go back to Maya. I'm just going to duplicate this object, move it over there, duplicate this other one, move it over there, and go back and forth. This one should probably be scaled down a bit, something like maybe not quite that small. That's a hell of a small computer monitor. And this one is going to be up on top of something. So let's just move it up artificially in the air for now and it's gonna be over there. This one is actually larger than the other monitor, so let's just play with scale a bit here and move this one on down a bit. Let's go ahead and bring in another cube and uh, resize this thing just quickly manually. D, move it to the bottom again, the pivot not that far down, mind you. Up, V, right there. Scale this on down a bit somewhere there and over there. Let's go to modify center of the pivot and uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba D and bring it back to the bottom so I can actually align it with the bottom of the stuff we're working with and move it on below this element right here. Now they're all kind of squeezed into the same spot and that's pretty close. So we're gonna go to face mode again, move this on down to the bottom right there. I'm gonna take another look really quick and uh, might be a little bit short. So I'm gonna bring it up a bit and move this one to match. And there we are. Uh, let's see, next thing is, I could probably center this object to this object if I wanted to. I'm just gonna move this one over ever so slightly, give a little bit of a gap. Are these rotated in any way? Uh, this one looks like it's been rotated a little bit. We're just gonna, so it doesn't matter all that much, but let's at least rough things in, right? So how far over from the center line am I? So quite a bit, so that's, that needs to be pushed over. That makes me believe these elements need to be pushed over. And of course, this guy needs to go way over to the side, right there, there, and there. Save again, go back over. Uh, we got our fan, we've got our other monitors, looks like four monitors. Um, once again, I'm not going to spend time making different monitors. We're just going to duplicate what we have. So let's go ahead, control D, this big one over here, moving on over, what's the size difference? Uh, actually, this one looks pretty comparable to the other. The other one looks ever so slightly smaller. Scale that one on down a bit. And we put two on top. So control D, up, V, snap, and scale on down. Probably move it forward though. That would make more sense. And control D as well, move it up and over. V, snap it there, move it up over and put it on top of the other element. But this other element looks like it's got, it's hard to tell, maybe some electronics on the side. But once again, I'm really not going to care too much about it. The idea is just to create some sort of a security-esque looking location. Now, the next key feature is, of course, this fan and, of course, this crumpled up aluminum. Now, I got to tell you, uh, the one item in this entire room that I'm most like, what did he do, is the crumpled up aluminum. Um, it, the, the image itself is so damn noisy, I'm having a hard time discerning what's going on with that object. And quite frankly, what I'm kind of thinking of doing is just cutting up a plane and just moving these things all over the damn place and creating sort of this weird, strange texture with it. That's... 
That's kind of what I'm thinking about doing to make this sort of bunched up aluminum foil looking object. Uh, I have no idea if it's really going to work. Let's let's wait on the aluminum foil. I need to I need to think about how I want to tackle that thing. Okay, so that being said, let's jump ahead to the drawers. Now the drawers themselves, uh, at least this one over here, is going to be probably an extension of the legs. So let's just F8, right click, go into insert edge loop tool, and let's insert two edge loops at a distance that I find interesting. That might be a bit tall. So let's bring it on down ever so slightly, but I want to keep probably the same uh, thickness. That's probably a good idea. So that looks, unfortunately, a little bit too thick. Let's go back up here, move this ever so slightly up. Right-click face mode, right-click again, extrude, bring this on out. Now, because this is pushed in, I don't need to deal with the curve. Let's take a look at how far this over this goes. Mm, that's probably a respectable amount. I'm gonna hit the G key just to give me that next bit. Grab the top, right, once again, hit G to extrude, and then move that on up to the top right there. And take a look at the reference again, and you know what, it's close enough. It's pretty good, right? So let's go ahead and add some drawers to this object. Now the drawers themselves are going to fill in this entire space right here. So let's just create a cube, go with that, bring it on up, and start mapping things to the correct size. So let's go, go to the top first, and move it to the top right there. Let's go to the bottom, grab that bottom element, move it up to that bottom as well. And uh, let's do the same thing with the sides, and I'll push the whole thing in afterwards. So over there, you go over there, and now let's move the sides in. So let's move that the guy there, and it looks like I got the thickness a little bit wrong. We'll have to fix that in a second. There we are, grab that bit of thickness, and I must have something else selected. V, there we are, perfect. Okay, so now we have a box within this drawer space. Taking a look at it again, I've got two drawers, and I actually have some sort of a, uh, a separation between the two elements. So if we're gonna do this right, we might as well. Let's go to multiple edge loops. Let's add two, and let's add two in here. Use the scale tool to move these things closer together, and it does look like that separation is thinner itself than the actual uh, area here, so that's all fine. I am going to actually, let's hide this little bit right in here, right click, excuse me, F8, click, F8 again, right click, excuse me, shift click, insert edge loop tool, and do the multiple tools as well, multiple edge loops, grab the top right there, move that down to the bottom, move that one up over there, and let's combine these two, let's bridge them, so let's go to da -da 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 -da, bridge, and there we are, we've bridged those faces together, perfect, let's go ahead and display show all, now we have to cut things up a bit. Let's grab the bottom. I already know these are perfectly uh, split in half due to the way that I end up making this object. So I don't need to worry about anything. Taking a look at the reference material again, looks good. Uh, let's uh, control D this object. My pivot's in a weird place. Let's move the pivot to maybe that side right there and move it down to there as well. Great, I have my two drawers. Let's grab the faces of both of these objects. Come on, where are your faces? Where'd your faces go? Are they inside? Do I have this weirdness going on? I do have some weirdness going on. Okay, that's fine. Let us uh, take a look at it from the inside then. So actually, do I even have, what is going on here? Did I flip my faces from left, from back to front and front to back? If I grab this face here, what if I grab, is there if, hmm, I am, Ever so slightly confused, let's do a, let's actually hide everything else for a second and get a better sense of what's going wrong with this. Now to me, it looks like just the back face is reversed. So let's go ahead and try to select just the back face. And I had the top face selected as well. Woo! Let's delete that. So I don't know what happened there, but somehow the top and side faces became one. I'm just gonna go in here and bridge these real quick, fix them up. There we are. Bridge, please. There we are. Save that. I'm gonna do. I'm going to Control D this one, uh, D V that to the top, V that to the bottom, and then Control Shift Select to grab the other box. Whoops. Now we have both boxes perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and display show all again. Save 
and take a look at our reference material and the drawers do come out a little bit more than the other elements. So let's go ahead and just select one of these drawers, bring it on out a bit, grab the other drawer as well. There we are, F8, save. Take a look at our drawers. Now the drawers are incredibly narrow and thin here and they do have a little slot for you to grab stuff out from. I'm, I actually think that looks about right. So we're going to go in here, right click, go to insert edge loop tool. Let's add two right there. Scale them up a bit, a little bit to the center area. Take a look and it doesn't look like they're on center. They're slightly off. And it also looks like they're squeezed together a little bit more. F8 again, go back to that insert edge loop tool, do it on the opposite side. Take a look at the reference. Um, it looks like it's in thirds, which would be just about what I have here. Is it in thirds? Yeah, I guess so. Although it just looks a little thin to me, a little narrow. I'm gonna artificially uh, push these apart a little bit just to make me happy, like something like that. Yeah, there we are. Grab this element here, extrude this face out right there a little bit just to cause some nice shadowing to occur. Save again, delete the bottom one, control D this one as well, uh, and put the location in a, uh, a good place. Move it on down, V snap it right there and control save. Great. Okay, so that we now we have the underlying drawer area. Take a look over here again. Oh, we got a spider web. That's just gonna be a texture. I'll put that in sometime later. Uh, we have, of course, that amazing fan. We should probably begin to tackle that. Uh, and then, we, of course, we have all these pieces of paper. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, wonderful artistic renderings by children. So let's just uh, do that really fast. Come back in here. Go to plane mode in the plane. Uh, it looks like the paper only rolls in one direction. So if we get rid of all the the edge loops on one, let's keep one, just one subdivision there. F8, F8 again, move it on up out of that location, scale this thing down just a bit because it's a bit small, a bit large. Rotate it, let's do 90 degrees. Take a look at our reference again. And these are probably ever so slightly smaller and, and more like paper itself, you know, that eight by whatever 11 size it is. And let's move it on up to this wall over here. And back there, perfect. Move it over there someplace and just slightly off the wall. Hit F. Now we are going to bend this paper because it looks like all of them are slightly peeling off the wall. So let's go to modeling, uh, animation. I want to do deform, non-linear. There we are. And we'll do a bend and the bend is in the wrong orientation. Let's rotate this thing vertically a bit, hit zero right there on rotation, go to bend. And what I want is, uh, let's see, I do not want a high bound, but I also want to move the bend probably to the top of this object right about there. Uh, the low bound, I'm gonna to increase to somewhere around there. And let's go ahead and add some curvature, but of course it's in the wrong direction. So let's rotate this thing 90 degrees. There we are. And now we have a bent piece of paper. Let's take a look at the reference again. And they all are pretty substantially bent, so I'm pretty fine with it being this extreme. Eh, you know what, let's, you know, let's back it down ever so slightly. Let's just do a negative 10, negative 10, there we are. Let's go ahead and click this object, go to edit, delete by type history, so we can get rid of that deformer. And then let's go ahead and move it very close, but not quite up against that wall because we don't want any Z fighting to occur. And I'm going to need, how many of these am I gonna need? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of these, so let's just control, control D this. Two, grab both, control D, move them on down. Let's move ahead. Uh, we've got the cupcake and we've got the fan next. And of course we have the large poster, but the large poster is simply a plane. So let's do the large poster. Let's go ahead and grab it really quick. Wow, Photoshop, go away. Come back on in here, create a large plane. Uh, let's go on here, grab all these elements, shrink them on down, rotate this guy, put it at 90 degrees, enter. W key, move it on up, move it on over, push it on back and move it over just slightly off here. There we are. And uh, what what's the aspect ratio of this poster? It's definitely taller than it is wide. At least it looks like it is. So let's do something along those lines right there. Take a look at it again. It looks like it's gonna go behind this monitor all the way down there. And it is going to go almost to the top. So grab this edge 
edge, please. There we are. Move it on up there. And width wise, width wise, da -da 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 -da, a little bit wider, although the TV should probably be pushed further over in retrospect. But good enough. So there we are. So now we have the poster, which will have our characters whenever we decide to design them up there as well. You know, that's really ignoring. Uh, that is really annoying me how these papers are above the ceiling. So I'm just going to push them all down ever so slightly to compensate for that little bit of a problem. There we are. Does it look like there's more? Yeah, it does look like there's a lot more in that image than what I have. Whoops, not, not that. Please, over here and you over there. There we go. Fill the space a bit more. So in the next video, we're going to tackle the fan and the cupcake and, of course, the soda thing. And I'm still going to sit back and think about how I'm going to deal with those aluminum foil balls. I'm just going to think about that for a while. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later. George out. Bye. Bye.